larvae of the small white cabbage butterfly, Pyrus rape, are a pest in agricultural settings. This caterpillar species feeds from plants in the cabbage family, which include many crops such as cabbage, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts, and many others. Interestingly, plants can evolve resistance to herbivores, such as Pyrus rape. And in this video, we will test the resistance of the model plant species Arabidopsis thaliana to this tissue chewing insect using two methods. Hi, I'm Martin de Vos, a postdoctoral fellow in George Jander's lab at the Boyce Thompson Institute for Plant Research. Today, I'd like to show you how to set up a choice and a no choice experiment with Arabidopsis thaliana as a model plant researching resistance against the uh, pest Pyrus rape. Rearing of the caterpillars takes place on cabbage plants in the greenhouse. At least two cages are needed for the rearing of Pyrus rape. One for the larvae and the other contains the adults, the butterflies. In order to demonstrate the um, involvement of plant hormones and toxic plant chemicals in resistance to this insect pest, I'd like to demonstrate two experiments. The first will involve the de determination of the role of jasmonic acid, a plant hormone often indicated in resistance to insects in a no-choice experiment. Caterpillar growth can be compared on wild type and mutant plants impaired in production of jasmonic acid. The hypothesis would be that larvae gain more weight on the mutant plant. So let's get started with the first experiment. So we're going to do a no-choice experiment with the plants Arabidopsis thaliana um, to measure the weight gain of Pyrus rapi larvae. So what we first have to do is we have to carefully enclose these plants in one of these cups. We cut off the bottom of this plastic cup. So in order to enclose, I use the back end of this fine paintbrush. So without damaging the leaves, we're going to enclose these plants. So we have a no-choice experiment here between Arabidopsis, the wild type, and the mutant plant. The mutant is a jasmonic acid impaired mutant and probably more susceptible to feeding. This is a no-choice experiment because one larvae can only choose from one genotype of plants. So we're going to add one larvae to each cup. It's important to start off with larvae that just have hatched. So these are called L1 larvae. So here's one that has just hatched. All right. So I'm going to carefully place this larva on the test plant. So next step is to enclose these plants with their one larva. And I use a fine mesh and an elastic band to close them up so they won't crawl out. So then we wait a few days, usually seven days, before we measure the larval weight gain. So after seven days of feeding, we take out the larvae and weigh them on this scale. I use a flexible forceps, carefully pick up the larva, and I'm going to record their weight. So this guy almost weighs 250 milligrams. I'm going to compare the weight of this caterpillar that was on the mutant plant with the weight of the caterpillar that was on the wild type plant. As you can immediately see, there's a lot more plant tissue left of the wild type plant, so we assume that the larva is, has gained less weight. The larvae on the wild type plant only weighs about 100 milligrams. So there's a huge difference both in the amount of tissue that has been eaten and the weight gain of the larvae. So that's it for the no choice experiment. Let's move on to the choice experiment, shall we? Specialist pests identify and are attracted by host cues that are toxic to generalist herbivores. In the case of Pyrus rape, glucosinolates are used as an overposition egg laying signal. Here I will use wild type and mutant Arabidopsis impaired in glucosinolate production to demonstrate a choice experiment. Before you start this experiment, one needs to be able to distinguish male and female butterflies. Here's an example. Female Pyrus rape butterflies have two dots on each wing. 
while males carry only one. Sometimes males can be mistaken for a female if they have a second, often faint, marking. So let's set up the choice experiment. In this case, we have both a wild type and a mutant plant. The mutant plant is impaired in the production of glucosinolates. Again, glucosinolates are toxic to generalist herbivores, but specialists like this Piers Rabe that we're working with is attractive to glucosinolates. So these are the five larval stages of Piers Rabe, starting with the smallest, L1, first larval stage, gaining weight until the fifth larval stage, L5. Then it transforms into a pupa. And the complete transformation takes place and these larvae will result in adult butterflies. For this choice experiment, we're using this cage. I put in both the wild type and the mutant plant, and now I'm gonna add one female butterfly to it to assess the egg laying. I usually catch females that are fertile, so to make sure that they're fertile, I catch females that are actively laying eggs. I carefully place my hand around it and transfer it into the test cage. So we leave the butterfly in for 24 hours and then count the number of eggs laid on each of these genotypes. So some useful tips when you're doing these type of experiments is, first of all, um, when you select a female butterfly, don't use it for subsequent experiments because um, there might be an effect of learning. Secondly, one can only compare plants that have similar growth phenotypes. So if you have plants that don't have a similar growth phenotype, you can take similar sized leaves and mount those on top of an Elemeyer flask. So after 24 hours have passed, we can take out the plants, first the wild type plant. As you can see, it has a lot of eggs on there. And the mutant plant, the mutant that which lacks glucosinolates, so it lacks an oviposition or egg laying stimulus. As you can see, there's hardly any eggs, or very few at least, on the mutant, while there's a lot of eggs on the wild type plant. So I've just shown you how to set up experiments to determine resistance against insects. The first experiment was a no-choice experiment where we compared larval weight gain on mutant versus wild type plants. The second experiment, a choice experiment, we compared egg laying by a female butterfly also on a mutant versus a wild type plant. Thanks a lot, that's it. I hope it's useful for your experiments.